What's happening dogs? Mr. Allen here with a video on graphing of quadratic functions in three different forms. We got ourselves standard form, vertex form, and factored form. We're gonna list these key features for each one of these three functions here, as well as graph it. But before we get started, I got a question for you guys to either answer now or at the end of the video in the comments. Which one of these three forms do you find the easiest to graph and why? All right, now let's get graphing. We've got one in standard or general form, depending on what your uh, you know your teacher uses there. I'm a standard form kind of guy, but some people do refer to it as general form. What else? All right, we want to graph this thing, right? We're going to use at least three key points, maybe five, and we're also going to find some of this key information here, all right? Now, on a test, they might not ask for all this information, but I am going to show how to get all this information in this particular form here because I'm just dope like that. All right, so let's go for it. Is it opening up or is it opening down? This one, it's positive for our lead coefficient, so we are opening up like a cup. That's awesome. Axis of symmetry, okay. For that one, I need a fun little, little formula there. Actually, you know what, before I do that, what's the easiest piece of information to get from standard, aka general form here? It's my y-intercept. If I plug zero into this thing, right? If I plug zero in here, zero, Zero here, zero, I'm just left with five. So that is our easiest piece of information along with which way it opens to get from standard or general form, all right? Back to the axis of symmetry. I need to use this fancy little formula here, opposite of b over two a. So when I do that, opposite of b is negative six over two times one. That's gonna give me negative six divided by two. So I'm gonna have x equals negative three. That's my axis of symmetry right there. Not really sure exactly where the graph's going to go. I didn't want to impede too much, right? Vertex time. How in the heck do I get my vertex? Well, I just did the axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry, which I could plot right now. You know, I'm going to use a fancy ruler again here. Whoop. Axis of symmetry. X equals negative 3. Lovely. Arrows. Awesome. My vertex is going to be somewhere on that axis of symmetry. So I can use that X coordinate, which is negative three, and I can plug it in to get my Y coordinate, all right? So that's pretty awesome there. That's a nice little fancy thing to do. And guess what? If I have an X coordinate in any function, if that X coordinate exists on that graph, I can plug it in and I will get the Y coordinate. That goes with it. Not just for my vertex, not just for my X intercepts, not just for the Y intercept like we did here where I plugged in zero and I got five, anything I want. Generally speaking though, we're doing our key points, our vertex, our y-intercept, things like that, okay? So I'm going to do this work off to the side because I know this graph is going to be somewhere over here. It's positive opening up. I'm going to work the vertex over here. So I've got f of negative 3, right? We're plugging in negative 3 here. That's what this states here. It says f of negative 3. That means I'm going to plug negative 3 in for all of my x's and evaluate it. But it's a lot easier to say that's all I'm going to do by writing this notation here. That's function notation. So i got negative 3 squared plus six times negative three plus five. Hopefully I didn't run out of room. Let me check my watch. Or Gucci, okay. Next up, we got negative three squared is nine. Six times negative three, that's negative 18 plus five. Now I've got what, negative nine plus five? It's gonna be negative four? Beautiful. So I got negative four right there, all right. So I got my vertex, let's go ahead and plot that thing. Negative three, negative one, two, three, four, whoop. There it is. So it's gonna look something like this, right? So next thing here, um, let's see. We got our y-intercept. I can actually plot that, zero comma five. One, two, three, four, five. Nice. And I am three away from my axis of symmetry, aren't I? Would it be logical that I could just say, okay, I can go three this way, I can go three over this way. I know I'm getting into like some of the question there, but that would be symmetrical, right? The whole point of the axis of symmetry. And now I have enough to connect these dots, but I am going to do a little bit more here. So we want our X intercepts. There's a way to get these X intercepts. Again, they might not require it of you right now, but we should know at this point how to factor. So I can take this, uh, let's see here, this function and set it equal to zero. I'll do it over here as well. Zero equals X squared plus 6x plus 5. Well, what multiplies to 5 and adds to 6? That'd be positive 5 and positive 1. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. And if I set these equal to 0, 
I basically I just put this in factored form, right? We were given factored form in other examples. Here I'm putting it in factored form myself so that I can solve for my x-intercepts. Ain't that a fun little thing to do? So I've got negative five comma zero and I've got negative one comma zero. Let's plot those points. Negative one, zero is here. That's three, four, five. Oh man, look at, that's looking nice right there. And just for fun here, I'm gonna show you guys there's actually another point here and another one here. I could plug negative two in here and get the points, but I'm just going point friends here. You don't need all of these points, but hey, the more points, the more accurate your graph is going to be. Generally speaking though, they're only gonna require three, maybe five, points when you're graphing a quadratic since we had to get the x-intercepts and they fit nicely on the graph figure why the heck not y-intercept was the key one there because we could reflect that over and get a next another point for free and we already had our vertex so there we go guys graphed in standard form this is beautiful right mathematical poetry all right if you guys need the other ones make sure you check out the other couple videos there factored form as well as vertex form right because there are different strategies that we use for each form so knowing how to work with each three it's going to be super helpful to you and save you some time. Otherwise, you're going to be going through all these crazy stuff. Uh, it's going to get confusing. All right. So watch all three. All right. Get all three in your repertoire. And uh, that's it. Who doesn't love graphing quadratic functions? We got one that is g of x equals negative 2 times the quantity x minus 3 squared plus 4. This bad boy is in vertex form. We're going to list these key features here. Guess which one is the easiest to get when it's in vertex form? The vertex, yes. All right, so the vertex is an easy one. Also, which way it's opening up, down, it's a negative. So we'll go ahead and circle down right now, right? Vertex is going to be, well, this guy right here, that's my H, right? So this is H right here, and that's K right there. Got to watch out for that X minus 3 because it's just this number here, all right? It switches with the sign there because our form is X minus H quantity squared, so there's that negative there gets flipped around. So always remember, it is the opposite sign from the parentheses there. So we got three comma four for my vertex. And that also gives me my axis of symmetry, x equals positive three. How wonderful, my goodness. I've already got majority of the information down here, bro. That's dope. All right, so we got three, four. So let's see here. Three comma four right up here. Awesome. Also throw my axis of symmetry through that bad boy. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. This is going to be, a, I can feel it guys. This is going to be a great, great graph here. Okay. Now we've got some options here of the stuff we need to get. Um, now, if you're not being asked for these two pieces on say a test or a quiz, and you're just asked to graph with three key points, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay. And then we're going to get back to these two pieces of information because we don't always ask for these two when it's in vertex form. Definitely these three pieces, right? The easiest ones we'll ask you for. But for now, let's, uh, let's get some other points going on here. Okay. How about a little, uh, maybe a T chart or we could show some, you know what? I don't even need a T chart. Okay. Check this out. I've got a point at positive three here and I can go to the left or to the right. And I know that another point's going to exist. What point is to the left here? Well, that X value is two right? So if I were to plug in 2 for x into this function, I should get a corresponding y value, right? That's a voice crack and I'm going to leave it in. So if I were to do, if I were to do, uh, let's see here, g of, g of 2 equals, I'd have negative 2 still. I'm going to plug 2 in here. So 2 minus 3 squared and then I got plus 4, okay? So we've got negative two, that's negative one in there squared. So negative one squared plus four. Negative one squared is just one times negative two is gonna be negative two. Plus four gives me two. So I should have the ordered pair two comma two. This being my X value. This guy right here is my Y value. So I get the ordered pair two comma two from this whole mess right here. So let's plot that. All right, so I got two, two, there we go. And now that I have that point, I can reflect it over my axis of symmetry, only one away there, still at two, and I get the point four comma two. I'm gonna use that axis of symmetry to my advantage, it gets me free points basically, right? Everybody loves free points, especially on a test. I don't know if it gets you free actual points on the test, but it gets you extra points here, all right. Now let's go with our, I'm gonna go with the y-intercept first, because it is the easier one to do. We'll save the x-intercept for the end, okay? 
So for my y-intercept, what's my x-coordinate always going to be when I'm getting my y-intercept? Well, that's going to be 0. All right, my x-coordinate is going to be 0 because it's always along here, right? It's always along my y-axis. So I'll plug in 0, and I'm going to go ahead and do that again, similar to what we just did here. g of 0 equals negative 2, 0 minus 3, squared plus 4. Now, here's the thing, guys, is a lot of people think, oh, uh, it's just this number right here. No, it's not 4 this time. This is not standard form, so I can't just take the little dude that's chilling at the end there. All right, that's my y-coordinate of the vertex, not my y-intercept. i got to plug in 0 to get that. And if I plug in 0 for x, I'm going to get the y value that goes with it. All right? So I've got negative 2, and then we got negative 3 here squared plus 4. So we got negative 2. What's negative 3 squared? That's 9 plus 4. So this is negative 18 plus 4. It's going to be negative 14. So there we go. 0, negative 14, that's way the heck down here. So I'm not even going to plot that one, but we are able to get that y-intercept. We did so by plugging in 0 for x, all right? Last little bit here. Again, I don't know if everybody's being asked to do this right now. So if you're like, I don't need my x-intercept, you can just go ahead and you can plot this bad boy. Whoop, there's my graph. Whoop, and you are donezo, man, all right? But if you want to stick around for the x-intercepts, Go for it, man. I love it. All right. I'm, I'm here for you. We're going to do the x-intercepts, all right? When is it crossing the x-axis? When it's equal to zero. And I'm going to do that right here, hopefully right below my face. Okay, zero equals uh, negative two, parentheses, x minus three squared plus four. All right, and I'm going to solve this thing for x. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract four. So I get negative four equals negative two. We got x minus three quantity squared. Then I'm going to divide by negative 2 on both sides. And I get 2 right here equals x minus 3 quantity squared. Then I get a square root on both sides. I'll do it in a different color because why not? Boop. And I get plus or minus the square root of 2 equals x minus 3. And if I add 3, I'm going to get 3, sorry, let's say x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of Two. Boy, howdy, that is wonderful. And square root of two is like 1.4-ish. So I'm going to have three plus 1.4-ish, which is one, two, three, four, almost, you know, right between four and five, right? 4.4-ish. So that's actually pretty accurate on our graph. And if I subtract 1.4, I'm going to be right around like between one and two, right? Right around like one and a half, 1.6-ish, right? Something there. All right, so we did a pretty good job with that graph, right? My x-intercepts are terrible, right? Uh, we got uh, 3 plus root 2, comma 0, and we'd have 3 minus root 2, comma 0. And again, guys, um, most of the time we're not going to ask you for the x-intercepts in a situation like this. It is possible to get them, right? But the main things we're going to ask you for, we're going to say, is it up or down, concave up or, or opening up or down? Uh, what's my axis of symmetry? What's my vertex? Pick another couple points to graph. And away we go. This right here is a little bonus, more advanced information that your class might not be covering. But there we go, man. Dope quadratic function in vertex form. We handled it like a boss. That was dope, awesome, and radical. This one here, we have factored form. So we're going to get those x-intercepts right off the bat from this bad boy, as well as which way it opens. Is it up or is it down? Well, since we have a negative out in front, we know that it's going to be opening down. So I'm just going to go ahead and circle that one right there. All right. Opens down. X-intercepts now. I can take each one of these factors here, set them equal to zero, and then solve for X. I'm going to do so. How about right over here? So we've got X minus 5 equals zero. Add 5 to both sides. And I've got X equals positive 5. So I'm going to have an X-intercept of 5 comma 0. And we can do the same thing there with our x minus 3, set it equal to 0, and we'll end up getting 3 comma 0. So I have two separate x-intercepts here. And I'm just going to, I'm going to plot those guys right now. So we got 1, 2, 3, plot it right there. And I've got 4, 5, plot it right over here. Awesome. And it is opening down, so we're probably looking like something like that right there. Next up, our axis of symmetry. Where is that axis of symmetry going to be happening? Well, it's going to go through the vertex, which I don't know where that is right now, and it's going to pass directly in the middle 
of these two x intercepts. That's the piece of information I'm gonna use for this one here. So I'm gonna plot, you know what, let me get a straight edge. Whoop, got one of these bad boys. Oh, that's gonna be beautiful, okay. So I'm gonna plot my axis of symmetry here with a lovely straight edge. Oh, that's wonderful, that's fantastic, excellent. All right, pop some arrows on that bad boy. Boom, good to go. Now, what is the equation for this axis of symmetry? And yes, it is an equation of a vertical line. Vertical lines are x equals, and it's passing through four right there. Boom, diggity, that's dope. And not only is that four key for my axis of symmetry, it is also the x coordinate of my vertex. Now, if I have an x coordinate, I have an x value that works here, right? How can I get a y value that would finish off this ordered pair? How would I get that y value? Well, if I have an x value that is somewhere on this graph, anywhere on that graph, I can plug it into my equation up there and I will get my corresponding y value that goes with that x coordinate. That doesn't just work with the vertex. It works for literally any point that could exist on this graph. If the x value exists, we'll get the y value that goes with it. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And I'm going to show this in function notation here, dogs. So we've got ourselves f of, so f of positive 4 is equal to, we got negative 2, then we have 4 going in for x, minus 5, and we have 4 going in for that other x right there, minus 3, lovely. So I've got negative 2, negative 1, 4 minus 5 is negative 1, and then positive 1. Sorry, we're going over the, the graph right there. Hopefully we can see it okay. So I have negative 2 times negative 1, that's positive 2, times 1, that's positive 2 still. So there we go. We got ourselves 2 for my y coordinate. So 4 comma 2, I can plot that right now. Right there, 4 comma 2, right up there, beautiful. And now I actually have myself at the uh, three points here where I can actually graph this thing. Some will ask for five total points, depending on what your teacher wants. Um, I'm just going to go with three because I can make a pretty dope looking parabola right here. Whoop. Awesome sauce. Now, I did ask for the y-intercept here, okay? I've got my graph done, but I did ask for some key features. How do I get my y-intercept? Well, I know it's going to be crossing on the y-axis. What's my x value anywhere along this y-axis? It is zero. So I know my x coordinate is going to be zero, and I got to figure out my y coordinate. Hmm. We seem to have had a, an x coordinate that we knew earlier, and we were able to do something to get that y coordinate. Flashback. Oh my goodness, I just smudged. Oh no. All right. If I could plug in my x value here of four and I got two out, I could plug in zero and get something out. Let's do that once again. This time I'll go with green here. Actually, you know what? I'll go orange because we already used green. Okay. So I would have f of zero. Now, this one, super easy to get the y intercept when it's in standard form or general form, as some call it. In factored form and vertex form, it takes a little bit of work, but no big deal. I love to do some work, work, work 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 like Rihanna you know right there we go all right zero minus three so I just substituted in zero for my two x's in this equation remember f of zero that's just notation saying hey man I'm gonna plug zero in for x in this f of x function right and I'm gonna evaluate it but that was a lot of words I don't want to write all those words down so we write f parentheses zero f of zero that means the same thing as what I just said all right so now I've got negative two negative five negative three, that's a whole lot of negatives. That's gonna get confusing. One, two, three negatives. If I have three negatives, negative times negative is positive, times negative is negative. So it's gonna be negative overall. What's two times five? 10 times three is 30. So I'm gonna get negative 30. See how I broke that down there where I dealt with the negatives first and then with the actual integer. So if it's a non-calc test, then you can handle those, right? We're not gonna plot that thing. It's way the heck here, down here. It's like underground right now from where this thing is relative. You know, but there we go, guys. We got ourselves a graph from factored form, right? Got all these key pieces. Uh, the x-intercept, easiest thing to get there from factored form, but the other stuff there is also manageable. All right, I hope that helped. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm also gonna do vertex as well as standard form. So if you need help with those two as well, be clicking on them dope videos. Maybe even hit subscribe, hit like, all the fun YouTube things. See you dogs later.